Hello everyone, good evening. Welcome to Factory Berlin. Um, my name is Graham Duplessis, I'm the brand director here at Factory. So Factory Berlin is a curated network of over 5,000 people now. Um, our mission is to give every creator an empowering network. Um, so we bring people from across disciplines together to collaborate, to co-create, to build really innovative uh, businesses, products, projects. Um, and we empower that network in a few different ways. A huge thank you also to Squarespace for bringing this content to us today and um, for kind of giving us the opportunity to offer our members some really interesting uh, knowledge and expertise. Um, without further ado, please welcome Victoria to the stage with a round of applause. Hello. OK, you can hear me. Perfect. So hi, I'm Victoria. Um, as you can see, uh, that's me on the picture, and that's actually also what I'm doing. I sit and like I sit in front of my laptop and I build websites, which we're about to talk uh, today. And the topic of today is sales-driven websites. So probably you're here because you have your own business, you want to sell something, whatever it is. This is your topic, so that's perfect that you're here. And um, yes, so I guess I can just like tell you a little bit about who I am, why, what qualifies me to be here today, and what we're going to talk about. And that's me in my uh, green outfit there. I'm Victoria. I build Squarespace websites, and I've actually specialized in Squarespace as a system, particularly in 2019. I discovered it in 17, so I've been on this platform for quite a long time, and I've also built websites and e-commerce stores and stuff on other platforms, like Shopify and stuff before. But now I'm just working with Squarespace, almost only um, since then. And in this area, I built uh, templates. We're doing one-on-one -on -one services, courses, um, mentorship for web designers, everything. So that's uh, the whole universe of what I'm doing all day. And today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I actually do, like what has been my journey so far, how I learned personally to actually sell my stuff through websites, because it's very different than selling in person, obviously. Um, what you need to know about selling online, um, some key choices about what makes your website sellability, and a lot of things that especially beginner website builders overlook, because a lot of people just think once it's done, people will just roll in, which is not going to happen. So a little bit about my background story. I just um, said to you that uh, in 2017, that was actually, a, I remember that, that was in a fall, I had always um, done a lot of projects on the side because I've always, I think my first HTML book from the public library, I got it when I was 12 or something. And I was always very much into these things, build really ugly websites as a kid. And in 2017, um, I had set out to build a website for a side project, which was an affiliate blog. So kind of, I wanted to earn money on recommendations and stuff. And I've always been really interested in um, the final website product, but the process to get there was always like painful, painful experience. Um, so I wanted to build this blog, but everything I had done before was so like, I liked the result, but not the process. I was like, oh, I want to throw my computer out of the window. Um, so this blog, um, I wanted to build it. I had the concept and all the ideas, but everything I tried so far was really complicated. And I was like, oh, this is going to be like this huge project. Um, and then I've tried so many things and I actually, built the websites, but I think the selling part was really complicated. So in this affiliate blog, I also planned to sell some other stuff, but <sighs> it didn't like turn out to be what, what I wanted it to be. I didn't kind of manage to do anything with it. The good thing was that I actually discovered Squarespace, which I'm here with today um, in this particular project. So um, since then, I've done so many like tests, selling parts, I've, I've sold e-commerce things, I've sold services, courses, whatever, <laughs> online uh, for me or, uh, or for clients. And all, as I, as I told you uh, today, like since 2019, we're only specialized in this. So this is what we're doing kind of every day with a, with a small team now. First, it was only me. Um, so we're like building websites. Some people even take two. So you can see like we're doing everything from like pink websites to more like simple ones. And that's what a lot of people always um, ask when you kind of work with these systems. Am I going to be able to do it in my own style, my own way? And the answer is usually yes, especially when you work with Squarespace. And you're probably here because you want your website to 
make people trust you, which is one of the most important things, which we're also going to talk about later, then show you as a total <laughs> pro, because that's often the thing that when you build it yourself, that it looks a bit self-made. And the most important thing, I guess, bring customers and pay you and give you money through your website without you having to sell your stuff on your own. So this concept that I'm about to show you right now is kind of baked in in everything we do in our uh, company, because it's usually the source of frustration for every website owner that comes um, to us because there is really something in it which we can identify in every single person that we've dealt with. So <laughs> what do you need to know to have a successful website that is selling is that you actually, a website is only one part of a system which is kind of a three-part system. It is part of this holistic picture where the website is only the middle part. So it's actually three things that you have to consider. The first is what I call the drive-in, which is, reminds people of McDonald's, but you know what I mean, like the, the kind of way to your website, which can be anything, but you have to think about how are people actually getting to your website. Some people decide to push it via social media. I was always really big in SEO, uh, optimization for organic Google results, um, being high there, or you could be um, in the press doing a lot of things. So there's plenty of ways to make your website known but you have to think about it because it will change the way that you optimize your website when you think about what is your actually main driver of traffic in that sense. Then the website itself, what's happening on the website, how are, pe how are people um, navigating through the website, what is going on there, these things. And then what, like these first two parts, most people get, but the last part is actually really a make or break deal for a lot of people and that's the so-called follow-up. So what is happening before or after the people have watched or visited your website. Because the problem is that the average visitor is there for like one or two minutes of their, of, of their lives. So most people in these one or two minutes are not ready to just like give you a lot of money. And this is especially frustrating for a lot of service providers because usually you'll, you'll sell things for like maybe a few thousand euros, maybe more, but also for e-commerce. And p the problem is that people, of course, first want to look and if they're going again, leaving again, you have no chance to ever reach them again. But if somebody is looking on your website, on your stuff, there is a really high chance that they're super interested because there's so many million websites and they've visited you, they've heard of someone, they've come to your website. So this person is so important to kind of keep in touch with, which most people forget. And that's also what we're going to talk about today. So when you have a lot of traffic and the website is good, what most people miss is actually the follow-up because then you will only have the people, like a really small, small percentage, which is ready to, set, uh, to buy right now, and that's just maximum 3% in any given market situation. So if you want to sell with or through your website, you have to have a plan for all three parts. And <laughs> I'll show you some easy ways. Um, and easy is not always easy in the sense that it's not always simple, but if you have understood the concept, you can make it work for you because everyone's different. Some people are social media, super power person. I'm personally not so much uh, <laughs> that person. But um, we're going to start with the website itself because that's what most people think about when they think about, okay, how am I going to sell through the website? Um, and I'm just wanna, I want to start with you um, just to know what, what, our, like, what our audience here is doing. Can you raise your hand if you're a service provider selling services? Okay. E-commerce? A few people, yes. Um, online membership, courses, consulting, coaching? Okay, cool. So most of you are selling services. Perfect. So, um, First thing, which is very obvious, and most people kind of get it, but there's still a few things that I want to name, is of course the homepage, which is the main page that people are visiting. Um, and that's usually the page that people also go to, even though they've landed on another site. They want to just see what it is. It's usually going to be an, a teaser of all the things that you're doing and an intro to all the kind of topics that you cover. And the most important thing is that your homepage optimized for super quick speed in terms of giving you just some classification. Because people vis are visiting so many websites per day, they're just like scrolling and here and there and then another update and so on. So when they see your website, you have like half a second to tell people what it's all about. So what is really important 
is that actually the first thing that people see, it's called above the fold, which is coming from newspapers, actually, because newspapers used to be folded, and what you see above the fold used to be what you kind of saw in the newspaper stand. And this area is the most important area of your website. And that's also what we're looking at all the time, um, is when people don't scroll, like right in the second they open your homepage, what is visible there. And what is really important is that the context and the topic, like your kind of branding needs to be vis visible there already. So what you shouldn't do is being like, welcome to my website, or hi, and then a very um, inspirational quote. Um, because that's what a lot of people tend to do, but what is really important is what are you doing? What is the benefit that people can get here? What is your category? What is your industry? What, what is the vibe? It all has to be in this, and you, you shouldn't waste it on saying welcome or some things, because people know that you are happy to, <laughs> to have them. Um, which is different, of course, from a physical shop. You would always say like hi or welcome, but you don't have to say that on your website. So what do you want to do is actually to have something that people do understand um, in the first second. So this is an example of um, a, actually a coach for um, ambitious academics. And in this case, you can see that there is a picture, so you can see there is a person behind it. And the topic is grow and develop your self-concept as a scientist. And because this is still a little bit slightly misunderstanding, we put like everything for ambitious uh, academics down here. Um, and everything else, which is kind of explanatory and stuff, is coming below. So you have to have like this first tagline where people are like, okay, what, what is this all about? So this is really important. And what you also need to consider always is mobile. So depending on which area you're in, B2B or B2C, the mobile um, numbers that people are ac accessing your website are super high. So in my case, I have B2B, so a lot of people are actually sitting in front of a like, desktop, which is not the norm. As when you're B2C or more like for people on the go, it's up to 70% mobile these days, So, <laughs> and which is a bit weird because you, you still build your website on the desktop, so most people think desktop first, but actually you should think mobile first. And then also, think about the above the fold, like people that are not scrolling, what are they seeing on your phone? Because this is also when they have multiple tabs open, what is visible there is super important. And this first sentence, my own, has taken me like half a year to kind of optimize. <laughs> so the simpler it is, the more difficult it is to get through it because it's really difficult to kind of, especially for creative service providers, we have a big problem with people saying, but I do so much. I can't put it in one sentence. I, like One key phrase is not enough, but you kind of have to, what you would tell a person who could only introduce you with one sentence. What is the, what is the area? What is the kind of key benefit? And in this case, this is a really good example because if you only had the picture in this case, in this photo, okay, what is this? Something with weddings? Yes. So you have to put the exact thing you're doing. So in this case, it's wedding photography. But if you didn't have this really clear sentence, it could be only the sentence like your day, your pictures, everything's nice. It could be a wedding planner, it could be a wedding dress service, it could be anything. So you really have to really put the name on what you're doing. And it's not enough to say something about wedding, it's like if you do wedding photography, put wedding photography on there. It's really important because a lot of people think it has to be moody and inspirational and stuff, which it can be through your pictures, but just put a clear stem on what you're actually doing in the first second. Um, what is really interesting about, the, about how you build it is that um, there is this feature uh, in Squarespace, actually, which is called Fluid Engine. So before, it used to be that you kind of had to kind of arrange things in a fixed area, and now what you can do is doing the so-called Fluid Engine thing, which is kind of letting you drag and drop things around. People kind of get a bit over their heads in this sense that now you can move all the stuff and around, but please still keep in mind that what is uh, like above the fold has to be really like clear, and then as soon as people move, you can be more crazy. So you can, of course, have multiple elements kind of overlapping into your lower sections, but always keep in mind that on every single page, not only on the home page, above the fold is the most important thing. So if it's about you, you should kind of clearly put it on that page. If it's about the blog, everything has to be visible like in the first second, on the first um, view. And that is actually really a cool feature because now you can just like move things and have overlapping elements over the next one and that's really cool for, um, 
for just freedom of expression after you've been very uh, focused on the first area. I want to talk a little bit about the difference between service, membership, and e-commerce sites, because I've seen there's a little bit of everyone here in the audience. The most important thing is obviously that you have the three-part system in your head when you kind of plan your website. So there is the follow-up, there is the website itself, and the drive-in, but it looks a bit different for the different sites. So what you want to do is first think about the main way that people should give you money. <laughs> and that's especially difficult if you sell everything. So in our business, for example, we're actually now dividing the service area because the, the call to action, so what you want people to do, has to be so clear throughout all the website. And the more you offer, the more diverse your target group, the more difficult it is. So you should actually for yourself say, OK, what is the main goal that this website should help you accomplish? And that looks very different, because if you're a service provider, usually you want to have a, a, a first contact call. You want to have like a discovery call, something like this. If you're e-commerce, you just want to sell your stuff right away. <laughs> and the membership is actually to create the trust to, for people to have like a longer um, binding relationship with you. So there's different things that you have to think about. In terms of web design, you should focus on that people really see from the start that they can buy products. And that's one thing that we see a lot for um, inspirational websites, that there's a lot of big pictures and inspiration about all the products, but people cannot really see that there's a product with a price. So people might think this is a blog about this topic or that services around this topic. So the products, which is in this case here, they need to be visible pretty soon after people are scrolling. And this is especially true for a lot of uh, people who sell their, let's say, like their own art or something. It's pretty much hidden behind you can request something or just give people the plain opportunity to see, okay, this is stuff we sell here, you can buy it right now and make it as easy as possible. And don't hide it too far down because you have to set the stage for, okay, this is a shop, you can buy stuff. So people kind of get in this mood um, from, from the start. And then I have one, of, one, of, um, one interesting case with, with this website, which is branding photographer. So this is like classic services. And if you scroll down, so you can see here, um, this is in German, but you can just leave like journal, branding shoots, this is a service. But then you can also have a hybrid, of course. Um, in this case, this person also sells um, these retreats or tools and also like actually some stock photos which are coming down. But you have to decide for yourself, okay, what is most important? And this person has decided up here, okay, we want to sell the brand photography. This is the main thing. So everything's optimized on book a discovery call, book a discovery call, <laughs> just get book this thing, and then as a secondary sales tool, she uses the shop integration, so people can actually also, like some people just want to get to know her, so like small entry products, this kind of stuff, but this is secondary. And a lot of people that we work with, when, when you ask them, so what do you actually want to sell, and then they say X, but they put something different in the center of attention. So hybrids are possible, but you have to always remember what is your main goal. And as a service provider, you usually want to have um, a discovery call or this, this kind of thing. And we also always recommend that you make it super easy for people because a lot of service providers still say, yeah, just send me an email. And for a lot of people, especially when you have lower ticket offers, like smaller services and stuff, a lot of customers, also especially B2C, are very shy. So people tend to book a lot more when you can actually already book the call right in the website. So make it as easy as possible because when people send you an email, they have to ask so many questions like, hi, my name is this, and maybe you have time for a call, but I'm not sure, is your website actually updated? Do you have free availabilities? There are so many uncertainties. So if you can just like have a cal calendar or booking system on your website that says free discovery call, 15 minutes, tomorrow if you want, you can have a spot, book it right away. Super busy people, they can just book it and done. And you should optimize everything on making it super easy for your customer just to take the first step. Because in services, the first step is really getting to talk to you. Because most service providers still, your personality is your biggest asset. So as soon as you can get to talk to people, like get them from the website to your like personal Zoom call, whatever you do, really helps. So do that. Then to first get the people to that, you should um, Think about your testimonials, but especially from 
service people and also the online course people, we get a lot of uh, questions about what should I do? Like when people don't want to give their names, how could I design it? So I brought a few ideas for you because it's very difficult for, let's say, uh, we have one sexual coach, for example, as an example. People don't want to show their faces, obviously, for <laughs> testimonials. So it's like very private products or services where people don't want to show up as their real selves. And it's so important, the more websites there are on the internet, the more important are testimonials. We can really see that the more social proof or real people there are, the more you sell. So signs of trust need to be immediately visible. So wherever you can, put testimonials, especially on the front page or also close to your um, buy now button. <laughs> so if you have a service sales page, most people have this customer, customer reviews page uh, separate from the rest, but if you sell something, let's say a service or something, put put a testimonial right next to the discovery call or to the book now button, because then people are like, okay, I'm not the only one who's doing this. Somebody else has approved this before. And there is a few ways how you can do it. So this is an example about um, a wedding speaker actually, and this is an easy case be because people are happy. She has pictures of herself with the bride and the groom. Everyone's like, yeah, she's amazing. So this is kind of the easy thing. And this is also the most effective one if you can get a picture and the full name, which is actually uh, when you click on this, there's a full name. So if people want to show their face with their name and say how awesome you are, this is the perfect case. So this is what you should aim for if, if you can, which works the best. Um, then you have another option with, with this website, it's actually a wedding photographer and the people who are kind of customers don't want to appear in this sense. So what she did or what we did was kind of to have like mood pictures of other shoots and just have the testimonials next to it, which is not the same person, but you can see it's more like this could be anyone, but it's kind of setting the stage and then you have pictures even though you only have the testimonials and you only have the first names because people didn't want to kind of show up there. So that's what you can do. Um, another one is, and this is from also in German from a, from a coach about um, energetic development. People don't want to kind of be there with their name or anything. So she's just taking the original raw, let's say Facebook comments or whatever she gets from them personally. And she can use it because she doesn't have the name, but because it's so raw and personal and it's like the real words, which are not edited, it works really well. And this is one of the Squarespace features where you can actually have like the slider so people can just like whoosh, whoosh, go through the, through the website. Then you have um, a so-called hero testimonial. So if you get a customer who's really happy, <laughs> you can ask them um, if they would like to write it down and stuff. And this is the example also in German from one, um, the um, sexuality coach because obviously people don't want to say their name and who they are and stuff, but they usually will say what they think if you ask them, if you, if you kind of say to them, okay, we're not going to show your name. So what we did for this one was to put it really big because this um, quote was just about the work with her and what it was and so on. And this really encompasses everything that she is about. So you can put it so big that people are just reading the text and they don't even need to know who said it because it's so strong in itself. So if you have anything where you're like, oh my God, this person said something really nice and it just, huh, Sometimes you get this like thing from your customer, then just put it really big. And if you kind of make it anonymous, you can just put it what customers say if it's real, but don't invent it obviously. So be, be real, but you can always be real without saying their names as well. So that works really well as well. So this is an example. You can just have, uh, let's say one person is willing to have the name and the photo. You could just mix it. And then some others are just having non-pictures and this guy has their pictures so you can always mix it in that sense so it's always a case of okay how many testimonials do you have do they want to appear with their picture but put everything you have if you have the on the website it, it really works then another topic on the website your blog <laughs> and that is one of my favorite topics because my that's my main marketing channel um, and that is a really cool thing because you can use it for both credibility as a drive-in factor. And this is kind of why the blog is in between on the website and drive-in, because when you optimize your blog for SEO, you can really be discovered. And depending on your market, your language, especially in the German speaking market, there's so much room. There's crazy much room um, in terms of optimizing for Google in every area. <laughs> so we have a, a, an SEO um, course and people are like, oh, everything is so crowded. But if you just go a little bit 
down. There are so many topics that nobody covers yet. So this is a really big opportunity to show off, especially as a service provider, what are your things that you know that you offer and a lot of things. And this is an example how you can structure it. And it doesn't have to look like a classical block. So this is actually a, a book coach or a, a, like a, how do you call it? Like she, she helps people to, to write books, to get their bu books published, to have the, the publishers, um, the first page that you kind of send in or to get an agent, these things. And it looks like like a printed thing. So there we work with a lot of elements which make it less look like a blog, but more like a, a magazine in that sense. So you can make it look like that and you also don't need to make it super news driven. So actually it's recommended that you make it more like evergreen, which means you have content that is always relevant for your services, not like the new MacBook uh, just came out because this is going to be old in a few months. And you can mix and match with every with everything that you want. This is an example for a web shop, which is using a blog as an inspirational channel because usually people ask, okay, how do I blog if I have nothing to say because I'm just selling stuff? <laughs> then you have to find a way how to put it in an in inspirational context and see, okay, what can you do? And in this case, we're just interviewing other people who have a similar style. And then you can put products in the blog post to kind of see, okay, if you like this style, you could also like this one. So there's a lot of ways, and the more content, and the more, especially blog content your website has, the more discoverable you are on the internet. So that is a really good thing. You can choose what, what it should look like. You can either have one of these like super big things, which is usually really good for photographers, people who use a lot of space for the pictures, or you could have like just like a really straight blog collection actually next to each other. So you can always think, okay, is your blog about the pictures? Is your blog about the text? What is actually the purpose? And it, it really works for a lot of companies. And how it looks in the back end is actually super easy. You just have your blog posts on the left, and then you put the blog post on the right-hand side, and it will just be visible as it is. So you, you can see it as you write. And I would still always write it in an external doc just to have focus on the, on the text itself. And this is um, what it looks when you kind of have the different um, things and you can also search your blog posts. What is interesting, what I just mentioned before, is for especially when you have e-commerce integrated or if you have services integrated, is what a lot of people miss is that you see your content in a different kind of division than your offers. So what you should do when you consider doing content online is always to put the, the possibility to buy something right away. Because a lot of people say, oh, I have to deliver value first and everything. But you can always tell people you can actually buy this stuff. <laughs> so this is the example from the, from the, art, uh, from the art print um, blog. You have the interview, get more interviews and stuff, but you can buy the stuff as well, see here. So you don't have to see this content as a separate collection on your website. You can really inter interact, let that interact with your e-commerce, but also your services. You could have an, an interview with you about topic X and then also say, oh, by the way, I offer this as a service book here or get a discovery call. So you can kind of always put it in. And a lot of people see their content very separate from their offers, but you can always really nicely do that. And if somebody sees what you do and likes the style or likes what you have to say or sees you as a pro after reading your super long expert article on XYZ, they want to work with you and you don't have to wait until they find your work with me page to tell them that they can work with you. So whatever you do, try to lead people through the content to your main goal. And the main goal is either sell a product, book a discovery call, whatever you want, but every single piece and every single page of your website needs to get people closer to this step and make it really obvious because people don't have time, they scan, they have no idea. So you can, you can both do that. And what is also written here, you can both sell and also work on your follow-up. And this is why we're now moving towards the follow-up. This is also why content is really cool because you can give people the opportunity to sign up for your email list which is an alternative to social media <laughs> and really nice, in sp especially if you have uh, problems with the algorithm. <laughs> when um, people are not seeing your posts anymore, what we usually recommend is that you build your own email list from your content, which is really working well for all kinds of services and products. So if you have the 
drive-in way and the website itself. Of course, you need to think about, okay, what, what, what do I actually do for this, for this part? And that's why I want to talk about SEO, which is, if you haven't heard about it, search engine optimization. And this is really about how are people seeing you on Google? Is there anything that is turning up when you're there? And this is also like, this is one of the screenshots, how it looks in the back end. What I would recommend if you haven't done it so far and if you have put content on your website is before you upload it, always rename the image what you want it, what you want it to appear in search engine results. So if you're like, so let's say you're a dog trainer in Berlin, you don't want to name your picture image one, two, three. <laughs> you want to name it dog trainer Berlin and then upload it. Because every single picture or image that you name and optimize in a specific direction has the potential to turn up in search engine results. And that's what most people who do their website for the first time don't do. They just upload the pictures, easy going, and then they miss the opportunity to kind of give Google the chance to understand what it's all about. And Google will kind of see that there's a dog, but they won't understand that you are a dog service provider in Berlin if you don't tell it. So do it really obvious. And then in these so-called image alt text, what is here, also put a description of what this image is. And in this case, you could just put young lady with blonde hair, but this is not what you want to be found for. You want to, in this case, want to be found for wedding photographer. So this is what you put everywhere for every picture. And it takes a lot of time when you do it for the first time, but just do it when you have a whole website as a project, just do a whole boost of pictures and then you can upload them and name them and it's really, really helpful. What is also really important is that when you're in the area, which is how it looks in Squarespace, about the SEO area, you can just decide what should be the title and what is the, the tagline that you want to appear. You can do this for your homepage, but also for pages. So what should be behind it? How should it be structured in this kind of way? And that's a really important thing because you can appear with different taglines and the more you have specific keywords, the more you can appear in what you actually want to be. And you should always look for what are people actually looking for instead of just saying, welcome to my universe of whatever. Just put this tagline even more obvious in Google because if somebody gets a recommendation and has heard of your name, people are Googling it, and if they don't see, okay, dog trainer in Berlin, but instead if you write something, oh, I love terriers and whatever, <laughs> people are not going to see what you actually sell. So just put your most obvious statement here. It's really, really helpful. Then you have the blog posts, and this is the question that we get a lot, is, okay, what should we kind of name it and stuff? And what is important is that you always put in something in terms of title and description. So if you take home one thing from today is for every single page that your website has, put in the SEO title and the description because otherwise it will just fill with the content that you already have. So this is something that you can put in your notebook. Mm. And it says optional, but it's not optional. <laughs> just do it and fill in a short mini version of what your article is about and it will do so much better because otherwise, I mean, Google still pulls what it thinks is most relevant, but if you guide it and say, okay, this post is about why I'm the best wedding photographer in Berlin or why my dog training is cool or seven nice cafes in Berlin Mitte or something, and you can make it really short and sweet, just one or two or three sentences and that's it. And you only have to do it once and it will just be so much better for your SEO than not doing it. So. And then you can see how it looks as a, as a first thing. And what is also important, what you can see here, um, if you don't change the URL yourself, it's just going to be these cryptic things. So always think about, okay, well, how should it turn up in the Google results? How should people see it? And that's what a lot of people also forget, that if I'm, let's say, saying the seven best cafes in Berlin, it should be best cafes in the URL as well. So people see, ah, okay, it's actually where I want to go and not something really long or really um, obscure. Then we're coming to part three, the follow-up and the permission to contact the people that are actually visiting your website, which is really important. And as I say, it's getting more important because let's say five to 10 years ago, you could be really successful with a website and just sending traffic from, let's say, Facebook ads, Instagram, and everyone on it, but it's getting more, like, more competitive, more expensive, you have to put more money behind this. So what most people 
who have successful online presences do is they build up their own email list to be able to contact people they've already shown interest in what you have as a topic or what you have to sell. So the follow-up, it can be different from case to case. We even have customers who can like send a physical catalog via like snail mail and people love it. So it's really diff different what you like. Some people use private Facebook groups or other things, but just think about what is your main follow-up. How, how are you going to stay in contact with people? It doesn't have to be an email list, but email list is just working across sectors and industries. But just think about, okay, how do you take the website visitor and turn it into a follow-up that you can actually contact because you have to own the contact information of this customer to be, uh, to be of this potential customer to be able to go in. Um, and this is also one of the built-in functions, which is email marketing. When you just say, okay, sign up now, nobody will sign up. <laughs> so what helps so much and what will 10x or something your sign-up rate is that you give people a cool reason to sign up. So what you will see in most e-commerce shops is 10% off, 20% off, whatever, because just the join the club wouldn't work. So we put the 10% off and then from one day to the other, we had 10 times more people signing up. So, so that really works. And if you're a service provider, you could give a cool mini informational thing, whatever you think is relevant to your customer without giving too much, of course, but just as an entry thing. And we're always testing, you know, like, should there be an image or not? But usually there has to be an immediate benefit. Nobody's signing up for my newsletter, because this is not <laughs> what people want. So you can make it really appealing. You can call it the club, the insider, something, whatever. Just make it really cool because people get too many emails already. So if you decide to go for an email list, make it a clear yes, because people get something right away. Because nobody, like if you say, okay, sign up for my news list, you're like, okay, how often is this gonna be? What is, what is in there? 10% off, everybody gets in terms of e-commerce. Or if you don't wanna give 10% give off, just think about something else that you could give. In this, in this case, we're probably also gonna do free screensavers of the same artwork, something like this. You could always think of free versions of whatever you sell. And most people take too long to start with it, even though it's super easy. You can just like, in this, uh, this is how it looks in Squarespace, you just click on get started, continue, set up your email list, select a template, fill out your text, and you're done. So there's not so many excuses. Of course, the difficult part is that you have to optimize for the traffic at the same time then you're collecting the, the follow-up. So of course, you can see if you haven't optimized part one, you don't have enough people coming through your website. The website is not optimized, nobody's gonna get on your email list. But if you have a flow through the website, part one, um, because you're doing whatever you're doing and you have people on your optimized website to sign up for the follow-up, there's a clear flow of people going through this channel and then you can send them materials about your info about your service, about your products, whatever, and it really works. But if something's missing, if you don't have enough traffic, if your website isn't optimized, or if you don't have follow-up, you will lose people at this step. And if you lose them at step one, or two, or three, it's really bad because then you just have a fraction of what you could be selling online in this um, perfect scenario. And of course, it takes time. As I always say, give people a reason to sign up right now. So in this case, it's like, it's in German, but it says three journaling prompts for a start into your life that you really love. So this is a life coach. So you would be like, oh my God, I wanna know what these journaling prompts are. I wanna start my new life. Um, just something which is really appealing to your target customer. So this is much stronger than just saying, hey, I have a newsletter, please give me your email address. It doesn't work. Give people something and they will sign up. A lot of people will sign up. So <laughs> one thing that I always mention here is that pop-ups really work. Um, can you, who of you likes to visit, like to see a pop-up on a website? <laughs> no one. Okay, what, what, half, a, half a person likes it. So everybody hates pop-ups, but they work. So I think there's nobody who likes like, oh, then, then you have the cookie banner and all the stuff, but the pop-ups, when we turn off the pop-ups, email and all the stuff will go down. So use pop-ups, even though you think people, people don't like it. They don't like it, but they will sign up. <laughs> they will do what is in the pop-up, and a lot of them will just download your thing or sign up or look what you have to offer. So use pop-ups, really, just do it. Um, and also, one more tip, use all the functions in your email tool, especially the, well, the so-called automatic emails. So when somebody signs up through your website, you give them the free whatever or the 10% off. In this moment, they are 
as interested, like the, the most interested they'll ever be in their whole life in what you have to sell. So what most people do is, hey, thank you so much for signing up, silence. And then time goes by, at some point you'll send a newsletter and something. So use all the functions of your email tool and say, okay, we'll set up an automatic response, which is called a welcome sequence. You can just say after a day, hey, you can see the, the story behind it or learn more about the services or something because people will forget who you are if you don't send them stuff after. So the first, let's say, seven days are so crucial for building up the relationship. So don't just say, yes, I have the email address. Send them something afterwards to kind of connect with you and just know who you are. And you can sell in these emails. People are really shy about that, but you can say, hi, cool that you downloaded this and that. Did you know I also offer whatever, or here's more information or inspirational stuff, background story, how I ended here, why do I do what I do? It really works. Mm. Also in this case for this um, art print shop that I showed you before, once we put the 10% in combination with the welcome sequence, we had like, I think, 500% more sales or something from really low sales. This really works, and it's super easy. You put it once, and it works forever because it's automatic. It really works. And the most important thing is actually to think about, okay, what are you going to do for your website? What is your thing that you're doing? And have you really checked the boxes for all three parts or are you actually missing something? Because if you don't have traffic, if you don't have visitors, you can, it doesn't help to optimize the website because nobody's going to visit it. If you have a lot of visitors, but they're, they're not coming back, it doesn't help either. So maybe you can just write down for yourself what is actually missing on your website or when you build a new website, now you know that you should always keep these things in mind. Because a lot of people see a website as a project in itself and as a thing that you have to tick off, but it's really part of a bigger picture. And you can use a lot of things, so it's very different from person to person. So yeah, people take pictures. <laughs> you can take a picture. So you can use a lot of things, and some people don't like specific things. So for myself, I never, I've never been a big social media person, so I was really optimizing my website for getting discovered on Google because it's also really long term. But a lot of people are like, oh, I don't like writing. So maybe you have a podcast or you just have LinkedIn posts who go viral. So there's a lot of channels that you can use to get people on your website. But just continue to think about, OK, if they come through LinkedIn, what are these types of people? What are they looking for? How can I kind of find them? And you can even set up specific pages just for people coming from LinkedIn and say, hi, LinkedIn person or something. So you can make it really as sophisticated as you want. And the most important thing is really to see, okay, mix and match. What kinds of parts does your website need? And what parts are going to help you to sell more? And what parts do you not like? And then you can leave them. But you have to have a drive-in. You have to have your website optimized and you have to have a follow-up. Because for, especially with a follow-up, a lot of people say, yeah, yeah, that's what she's saying, but you know. <laughs> and then you will see a clear uplift in sales when you have a follow-up in what sense uh, soever. It's for almost everyone, it, it will be the, the case. So don't forget that, that part because a lot of people kind of, yeah, drive in, I get it, but follow-up is really mostly the, let's say, 90% frustration for a lot of people. And especially when your follow-up has been Instagram so far, think about maybe you should have another channel because people, like especially all the algorithm-driven things are getting more difficult to reach people with. Yes, so, if you have any questions, we're just going to have uh, you walk around. And um, you can ask anything from new websites to concepts that you've seen or just specific questions about functions. I'm open for anything. So hi, uh, thanks for the call. Was really uh, for the. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had a long day. Discovery call, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask about the SEO. Um, mm -hmm. Is there something that needs to be done on Google as well, or it's everything on Squarespace? So there is only one thing that is recommended for everyone, and which is to set up the f completely free Google Search Console which is a free program by Google. It's, you can note it. It's Google Search Console, and it lets you see what people are actually searching for. It doesn't put any cookies or anything. It's just Google's information for you to see what words people actually use to get 
to you, but you can also set that up through Squarespace under the analytics section. So it, you can just connect it and then you just don't even have to leave Squarespace, you can just integrate it. It's one click, super easy. And it's free and you should do it right away because it will first populate after a few days. So, Google Search Console. Yes, it used to it used to be called uh, Google Webmaster Tools, but then I think people got too scared, so they called it <laughs> Search Console, <laughs> because people were like Webmaster. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, really awesome insights, and thanks for taking the time to share them. Um, in terms of building trust, we have seen that, you know, especially when it comes to conservative online users such as, you know, Germans. <laughs> 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 I don't mean politically conservative. I mean, like, people who are careful about sharing their data, right? Who will probably not input any emails into a pop-up or something like that. Um, do you have any tips on building a trustworthy website in terms of, yeah, if users decide to block most of the third-party data, um, and only by default accept essential cookies, but still have like a good website experience, how to combine the two? Yes, yeah, so the pop-ups are usually not cookie sensitive, so you can still have pop-ups. And what I always recommend is that, I mean, there are people that, that hate pop-ups. So <laughs> what we do is always have the email sign-up, because that's mostly what we optimize on, put it everywhere, in the footer, <laughs> on, the on, the, on, the, on the blog post, in, in between of the, of, the, of the text, on the pop-up, because people get really, like, uh, many people have seen so many ads that they get really blind about sign up here and stuff, so you want to have it everywhere. And usually what happens is that if you can prove to them from your content that this is a trustworthy, let's say you decide to go for content and people read your blog post, maybe if you put your sign up in the beginning, people are still like, ah, oh, my email address. But then if you convince them through your blog, maybe they've seen some testimonials and stuff, at some point they might be, okay, maybe I can give them my hotmail, private email address, so they don't know who I am. So this is what most people will do, not their like, good one. So you have to give them a lot of occasions where they could potentially do that mini step in, in your direction. So to ask really boldly on the first page, pop up, here, give me your email address. People are like, ah, I've just met you, I, I don't want to do this. So even for your email address, which is a mini commitment, you have to build up trust first. And you can always put the email address after or in between all your trust building elements. So there's nothing to say against putting a pop-up. As I said, it really works for especially the more non-conservative customers. But if you have more people who are like, oh, I want to see it first, you can put it in areas where they have just been guided through all your content, maybe after five amazing testimonials that say how awesome you are. So think about how you can lead them. And maybe it will even be not a pop-up, but you see that people will need to read X, Y, Z, and then you will lead all the people from the homepage to these trust building sites. And of course, in the German speaking market, it helps to have these banners of whatever you have. Have you have won any prices? Have you been featured in the press? All these cred credibility markers that really works. Put it everywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> any more questions? I'm going to go up the stairs. In the back. <laughs> My opinion on fake testimonials, don't do it. Because this is, uh, this is, um, this is one thing that, um, that happens is some people are putting fake testimonials. And some people are bolder, they put fake testimonials plus a fake name plus a fake photo. And the tools that average people have today are so easy. You can just put any photo in the Google image search and reconstruct where it's from. And if they see that you have a fake photo, from this stock photo website, this is like all your trust is just gone in one second, and rightly so. So just put real testimonials, because this is, this is the reason why people have to do all these efforts that I was just talking about, because people do fake things. It just doesn't help. And if you have a problem, because nobody, you don't have testimonials yet or stuff, just do an agreement, find a customer and say, hey, you get a cheaper price, or I'm even doing whatever you do for free, or a mini version of it, in exchange for a testimonial. It's super easy to, people are much more willing um, than you would think, and if you have a privacy problem, you can say, okay, I won't, won't say your name or whatever. Don't put fake testimonials. It will always, in the short, 
I think short term it might work, but people are so like somebody will find out at some point, and then this will spread faster than the the good testimonial is to get. So just get the good testimonial, the real one. Hello. Okay. Um, so I know you've been doing Squarespace exclusively for a while now. Mm -hmm. What made you choose Squarespace as opposed to some of the other competitors? Yeah, so I've, it's interesting because I think when I was 16, 18 for the local magazine, I think I, I worked with Joomla. Anyone has heard of Joomla? Which is like, I don't know if they even exist today because I haven't been on there. And then I used work pre WordPress and then I also have a shop still today on Shopify. Um, for me, I think the most important thing was always these days, especially if you're, small, if you're a small company, a single person, whatever, you need to be quick because this is your advantage in comparison to all the big players. If you have an idea, I want to have a new service that I want to sell tomorrow, I just put it on my website and sell it and it looks great. And I've never found a tool where I could just, as a non-tech person, even though I'm tech now, um, where I can just do the stuff and don't have this mental barrier of, oh my God, it's going to break or it doesn't look great or whatever. So I think the... The, the ability to, to act quickly and then have it look great and then I, I have an idea and in 10 minutes can I, I can make it happen myself. I don't need to call any programmer or whatever. I think this is so valuable and this is what I found on Squarespace because it's really focused on this design, aesthetic, really cool. You cannot really break things. I mean, with the new Fluid Engine update, you could argue that it's more, because you're more free, you can, of course, break more things. <laughs> so, but it's, it's, it's really about the, the beauty because the problem is also some, some systems are also nice to work with, but it doesn't look good. So I found this perfect uh, connection there. Is there? We're there. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> you just mentioned the necessity to eventually like con contact a software engineer, right? And I had a Are you a software engineer? <laughs> 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 okay. Um, basically, my question is like, when you get maybe not Squarespace as a um, p possibility to build a software, but like local solutions like Flutter or um, especially Bubble, what a lot of startup founders really find concerning is that like, for, for example, Bubble uh, owns the intellectual property of the code, so you only own the data pretty much. So like, what what would be made, like, because it's like the startup world, like is that, that is like one of the big points. So you mean, concern. yeah, I'm, I, I, I think I get what you're saying. Do you mean that because the website is pretty much not in your own property? Well, yeah, like, uh, Let's just like take the scenario of like an exit, right? You would sell to a bigger competitor, um, and they ask for the code. <laughs> Basically, what what are you gonna do? Okay, so I, actually, I would say that Squarespace. I mean, it's not the right if if code is your product. If you're kind of selling the code behind a product, you should code it yourself. You should use Squarespace when you want to have a website which is selling something else. You don't want to want to sell the website. And I mean, even if you could, like, potentially, you can also sell the website. Like, if your website, if the value behind the website, let's say, is your Google traffic, which would be my case, I could only sell kind of the traffic, um, that you could sell. Then you would just even take it away from Squarespace and move it somewhere else. But you're, you're not going to build up your own code in this one. What you can do still is put in JavaScript, HTML, or CSS, which I'm actually doing a lot myself. But of course, the under, it's like, you can compare it to a Mac, like <laughs> like when you have a, it's not open source, so it's like everything's closed, so you cannot sell the Mac, like the iOS system to something else. You cannot code yourself into that. So if that is your business model, then code everything from scratch and do that. But if your business model is, let's say, to sell a service, to sell products, to sell your whatever, or even the traffic, your blog, your reach, whatever, you can use it. But if your product is the code, do, just do it on your own and code it from scratch. That would be my opinion. Yeah. One more in the back. Last question, I think. Let's test. Awesome. Um, talking about SEO, 
Like, would you recommend taking one keyword and pressure it as often as possible in all the outlinks, or should I like have one topic area and broaden my keywords around this, which is a bit more effective? Oh, my favorite topic. We can talk about this later. I can talk about this for like Please. three hours. So about keyword stuffing, which is what you're kind of referring to. So five to 10 years ago, it totally worked. You could just take a keyword, let's say you want to rank for top seven cafes in Berlin, and just put it invisible in white all everywhere on your site. So Google would think, oh my god, she's saying 47 times top seven cafes in Berlin. It must be really relevant. That was 10 years ago. Today, Google thinks like, oh my god, she's stuffing all the keywords. We will just punish her and put her all down. So whatever you go do, and even I think two or three months ago, Google had this update, which was called helpful content update. So all they focus on is really, do people get the best answer to what they're searching for? So you don't even have to put the keyword as many times. You would, of course, have to mention it somewhere in the title and the description and also in the URL if you can. But all the rest should just be focused on giving the best information possible because Google's goal is that people will come back to Google because they always find what they want. So if they find what they want, Google will have more visitors and they will earn money, so they will push you. So if you just stuff stuff, like keywords, without giving the value that people are actually looking for, it won't work anymore. It did 10 years ago, but that's gone. These days are gone, unfortunately. <laughs> awesome. I know you've got time for another question. Any more? Oh, uh, yeah, hi. hi. I just have two questions that like, relate to each other. First of all, uh, because I have a website myself, and I try this, like, pop-ups or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. my conversion got worse once I tried it. So are you sure it really works or just people misclick on it when it like, pulls up? I mean, it depends what's in the pop-up. <laughs> <If Yeah>. you're, <laughs> are you very offensive or? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. So, What is in your pop-up? What does it say? And what uh, are you we selling? We just ask people to subscribe to our like email thingy to get 15% discount on our product. Exactly, okay. you just told us. Yes, I mean, if it doesn't work, oh, obviously, it's, I cannot say that it's 100% of people. So if you have data that it doesn't work, you would try to test other things. So either the 15% is too in your face, and often what you would try first is set the timer down so people don't get it right away, but maybe after 30 seconds. So only people who have been on the website for 30 seconds will get it. Or if it doesn't work, you would find other spots. So you would maybe have... Um, it interwoven into the content that you have or in between products or something, or you could have like specific sign up things in the footer because it doesn't like pop ups work for let's say 90%. But if you have data that it doesn't work, of course, I would first, um, you could experiment with a copy because 15% off, you could also have it a bit more soft because this is really in your face, like 15% off by now. You could have it in terms of this club or, or like insider. Area you could you could kind of experiment with the naming you could experiment with the with the timing so let, let's say first after 30 seconds because some people who just visited the website they don't want to have this here like pop up um, and if it doesn't work I would turn it off and put the email stuff everywhere else and see if that works better it might be that you're in the 10% or it's just estimates but it might be that you're there. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. It's the end of the content today. There's beers, there's wine. Have a drink, have a chat. Thank you. <laughs>